Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Extra Holiday Games. I'm Extra Holiday, and we finally beat Cursed Cavern. It only took us like seven or eight episodes. Uh, and the next level is a castle level. Oh, this should be fun. I, I really, I really don't care, actually, so I'm just going to mash. All right. Uh, I was talking about d d last time, and I'll finish my thought because I don't, I don't like lying to people. But I'll do it after I check the name of this level because it might be a reference to something. And I want to acknowledge it if it is. Eh? Eh? Wendy's Frosty Fortress. Oh, it's a reference to the restaurant Wendy's and also the Koopaling Wendy. That's funny. All right. <clears throat> Anywho, yeah, about D&D. &D. Oh, oh, I think I see what I needed to do. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, I don't think that's possible to make it once it's fallen all the way. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. So, yeah, D&D. &D. Uh, what I was saying is I realized that players want different things. Different players want different things out of D&D. &D. So, you know, it might not bother. Uh, it might not bother some of my players that. That fight that they're currently in isn't fulfilling the whole power fantasy of them being a super awesome adventurer. Because, you know, there there are other things that. It does show kind of uh there's a lot of there's there's a it's I don't wanna spoil things for people who haven't seen who didn't watch the stream or you know and, and might watch it later. But there's there's plot stuff going on in that fight. Like that fight is happening because of plot. Uh and there's also like the fact that the entire town is coming to help is kind of I, I like to think paints a picture of, you know, what it's like to live in this world or at least in this part of the world where, you know, just people are people are people actually care about each other and, you know, will band together to take out a greater evil, you know? And so, you know, well, one player, oh God, it's so freaking slippery. Uh, well, one player might be disappointed in that fight. One player might really dig it. And I, I just kind of want to know where my players stand on that. Because I think it's a pretty neat fight, but that's just me, right? That's just accounting for what I want to see out of a fight in D&D. It's like I like to I like to see fights that are not only I like to see fights that are challenging and I guess also I also like to play fights like this. Uh, I like to see fights that are challenging, but also have meaning to them, which is where a lot of my previous D&D experience was lacking because a lot of the times a fight was just a fight. And it, it was just something to do, basically. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm trying to do things a little differently. And hopefully, hopefully it's enjoyable. I and I hope that if it's not. People will tell me. Because I would appreciate it. Because like if we, if we wanted to go into the whole the fight's just a fight type of deal, then. I can do that, right? Like I did that. Most of my DMing experience is basically doing that. It's just like sending the players on a path and putting obstacles in their way in the form of combat. And not really worrying about world building or a plot of any sort. Yeah, I can do that is what I'm trying to say. And if, if that's what they prefer, then, you know, who am I to say no, right? Because, like, ultimately, my job... Ugh. Ultimately, my job is to make the game fun for them. Because I'm... Yeah. 
they, they say it all the time, but great power comes with great responsibility. And nobody in, nobody in a game of D&D &D has more power than the DM. So if it's up to anyone, it's up to the DM. For the most part, like players hold a little bit of responsibility here, but for the most part, it's up to the DM to make sure everyone's having fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do that. <sighs> Let's address this level, though. It's very slippery. And I do like uh, this little challenge here of jump off the falling platform before it, uh, it kills you, basically. Ah, uh, okay. These are... I feel like we're getting to the part in the world where it's very... We are very much getting into the precision platforming parts. And that's fine. Like, I'm not opposed to that. And I, I kind of knew going in that, that sort of thing was going to be a thing in these worlds. So I'm really, I'm, I'm not that upset so far because it's, it's, it's not coming as a surprise. You know, we're we're in world six. Things should be getting pretty decently challenging. Like even in a normal Mario game, things would be getting de somewhat challenging at this point. Probably not as hard as this, but somewhat challenging. I, mean, I guess it depends on which Mario game you're playing. The newer ones are tend to be easier. Because game devs are scared of scaring people away now that there are significantly more games for a person to play. <sighs> okay. The momentum there is weird. I feel like if I slam into the wall there, I just lose automatically. And it, it's... Right, so I gotta, I gotta avoid doing that. Gotta refresh on our lives. And that's really all that a game over means. So, I'm not too sad about game overing. Also, I do like how that first screen looks like it's actually a, a tower of ice, just like the inside is, even though the inside is definitely bigger than the outside. Uh, but it is cool. That's, that's a cool little touch. But let it be known that Ross has an eye for the aesthetics of a level. I mean, heck, he said in Rock Bottom, the whole reason that he made the level the way it was was so that he could keep the submarine at the end of the level, which admittedly is a cool submarine. But, uh, he kept, he made sacrifices just to keep it in there. And that's, that's kind of amusing to me. Maybe not something I would have done, but then again, there's a lot here that I wouldn't have done. And uh, there might be a reason that his stuff is more successful than mine. <clears throat> Anywho, I'm not salty, but actually though. Okay, all right, that could have worked. That could have worked. If I had been better, it could have worked. All right, all right, all right, all right. You got this? Nobody is going to tell you otherwise. Mostly because there's nobody listening to you right now. Uh, and in fact, there probably won't be anyone listening to you for a while because nobody's really been watching this series. Ow. <laughs> At least not anymore. <laughs> uh, there were people watching for a while, but... Uh, it's times like these where I really do feel like I'm talking to myself, which I mean, I am. But, you know, I, I become more aware of the fact when I realize like, yep, yep, nobody's been watching these videos. But you know what? That was a for a while. That was a comforting thing for me. And that's actually something that really helped me get started was 
the fact that I, I just came to the realization like, okay, I'm nervous about this, but I really shouldn't be because nobody is going to be watching me at the start. So even if I'm really bad to start with, like people aren't gonna see it, at least not right away. So I don't really need to worry about the instant feedback. I mean, surely there will be feedback down the line because I do, people tend to go back through a channel and watch its older videos when they discover it. I know I've done that a million times. So it's really, really expected that someone will go back to, I don't know, like Gravity Rush or Battle Revolution and be like, oh wow, this guy sucks at doing Let's Plays. And I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, you're right, he does. Guess what, he's better now. Kinda, maybe. I don't actually know that that's true. Hopefully it's true. I really hope it's true, but I don't know that it's true. Cause honestly, I've been, you know, when I go back and watch my old stuff, I'm like, what am I really doing different now? I mean, the most obvious thing is just audio quality cause uh, I have better equipment. But like, in terms of my actual skill, it does, I don't, it can be hard to tell whether I've actually made progress or not. Especially when I don't have any sort of feedback. Again, <laughs> we're going back to feedback. Yeah, it's, it's useful. I guess that's kind of the theme of this entire episode, is that feedback is useful. <laughs> I want feedback. But nobody, nobody's giving it to me. <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah. We're gonna beat this level. We're gonna beat it. And you know it's true because I said the same about the last level last episode, and then we beat it. So obviously, it's gonna happen. Uh, uh. Okay, all right, too fast. Okay, that's fine. Ah. Okay. Boop, boop. All right, uh, got it, got it, yep, yep, yep. All right, this is 100% focus mode. We got it this time, We're gonna, Die! I was I was gonna say die. I wasn't gonna say do it. I was gonna say die, cause that I was I knew I knew that I know the run was scuffed at that point. So there's no real no real point in being in like fooling anyone. You know I I knew that wasn't the run. This run though, this run, this is the run where we're gonna. Do I again? We're gonna die again. I I called it. We're we're dying. We died again, and I knew it was coming. So, yep. I just uh, I just get a feeling for these things, you know, like like I knew that was coming, like definitely, for sure. It was like I almost even did it on purpose, right? Cause like, you know, you know, like the whole self-fulfilling prophecy thing, you know, you, you, you like think something and it becomes true. It's basically, yeah, that's, that's basically what happened there. Except like, not kind of, I just, it's just, you know, I, I'm practically a seer is what I'm saying. So yeah, I can see the future. I could have made that a reference. I could have made that a reference. Because that's definitely a line in a thing that I've watched. It was a funny line, but it was mostly the delivery and the context that made it funny. Which means that the reference wouldn't have been funny. Reference humor is hard. Humor is hard. I don't... <laughs> 
Uh, it's one of the one of the things that I consider myself not particularly great at. <laughs> but it's also one of the things that I'd love to get better at because frankly, frankly, I like to make people laugh. And not just with my face. And how ugly it is. Is that funny? Did you did you laugh? I can't I can't hear you if you did, so like if you did, um I guess like put it in the comments or something. Just just maybe like I laughed. You could put that there and it would be um that'd be great. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks. All right. Um, hey, uh, while you're down there, um, if you could like put your social security number, that'd be cool. I, I don't, I don't need it for any particular reason. I just, I just want to see if you know it, you know, um, definitely, definitely not going to steal anyone's identity. I need to be careful what I say on mic, because, <laughs> um, mm, I feel like I could get myself into trouble <laughs> saying stuff like that. Um, yeah, just forget I said that, any of that. Um, I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't. Like, if somebody, <laughs> somebody gets their identity, identity stolen. And they're like, oh, I watched this video where it's uh, giving your social security number. I'm going to be like, uh, I'm going to be a little embarrassed and potentially have to deal with police. Uh. <laughs> Anywho, uh, hopefully we won't have to deal with the police next time. Because uh, as for this episode... That's a wrap. God, holding in a burp. Uh...